We are in the beautiful Chalice, Idaho area. We're near the River of No Return Wilderness and the Salmon River. We're investigating Bigfoot sighting reports. After I posted a bear hunter's Bigfoot sighting report near where I'm at now, one of my Facebook friends started talking about his Bigfoot sighting report. And I'm like, hey, I heard about that. I was going to the location and area to look around and I was going to give the Bigfoot sighting report. He thought that was a great idea, so here it goes. We were on the hunting trip about 10 people near Chalice, Idaho, south of the Salmon River Wilderness in October. We had stopped our trucks on a dirt road on our way back to camp following our morning hunt to work these hillsides that converged at a stream near the road. To our knowledge, there were no other hunters in the area. Four of us went up into the hills to make a great circle to try to scare up some game and drive them back towards the stream where the others were waiting. Being young, I volunteered to be the hiker. As we split up, I thought three of them went up the back side of one hill while I circled the other. As I came over the ridge, I found myself on a very steep shell-covered slope about 500 feet above the stream. As I was scared of the sliding all the way down to the bottom of the hill on my butt, I sat down to watch the opposite slope while my dad and the two other worked that hill. As I sat there, I saw what I thought was one of our hunting party walking across the slope, about a hundred feet below the ridge line. He crossed the hillside near the ridge line on the hill across a large ravine from me. That hill was taller than the other one that I was on. I remember thinking, boy, he is going to get shot, dressed in dark clothing like that. It kind of made me mad, because was walking at a rather brisk pace, not even stopping to look around for game. I watched him through my rifle scope, and for the life of me, I couldn't see any rifle in his hands. My dad had brought along one of our neighbors, who had very little experience hunting, and I figured it was that guy. After about 30 minutes, I saw my dad and his other buddy come into view. They were much lower on the slope. I estimated their range to be about 400 yards, but seemed to be smaller in comparison to the other figure I had seen earlier. We waved at each other to work our way back towards the others. When we got back to the trucks, the neighbor, of course, was late in arriving. While waiting for him, Dad was joking about seeing him walking along the ridge with his rifle, still in his zippered case, as it was raining lightly. I told him that I thought I'd seen him, but saw no rifle. He was dressed in dark clothing. Dad said, he had an orange vest and orange cap on. And how did you see him when he was above and behind you? I said, no, he was above and behind you. When the neighbor with the clean and dry rifle returned, he confirmed my dad's report. So I said, well then, who was that that I saw? Everyone was tired, wet, and did not care. We went back to camp and forgot all about it, until the other day. Now I'm starting to wonder all over again. Since whoever whatever I saw was probably 500 yards or so from me, I had trouble making out much detail. I had a variable 3x9 power scope. After I saw him, I cranked the power all the way up to 9 and watched him cross the open hillside without obstruction for probably a full minute or so until he disappeared behind the trees. I was watching this entire left profile. He walked rather quickly and did not turn to look at me. As far as I could tell, he did not appear to have much difficulty transversing the terrain. But then my dad walked across. It looked like my dad was having the same problem as I was with the steep slope and rocks that slide when you step on them. It took my dad forever to cross the same amount of space as this other guy and dad appeared to be much smaller. Even though he was obviously somewhat closer to me, Dad was probably 50 feet or so lower in elevation than I was. As far as estimating height, my dad is 6 feet tall, and this thing was much taller and broader, but not fat, kind of lanky. A really rough estimate would be at least 8 feet tall, with really long arms, and he or she swung them like a cross-country skier as he walked, and taking rather long strides as well. Two mornings after my sighting, we had started out in two trucks for our day hunt. It was very dark and cold, snowing slightly. It was still very dark, and as we slowly drove up this old logging road, 
we saw something crawl across the road, about a hundred to a hundred and feet ahead of us. At first I thought it looked like a tree sloth, or maybe it was a wounded bear. It was hard to tell in the darkness, but you could see a dark figure moving slowly across the snow-covered road. Everyone in the truck saw it, and we stopped where we saw it enter the heavy growth to the left of the road. This was a steep embankment, heavily overgrown with trees. Well, after we stopped, no one had the guts to get out and see what it was. One guy got out with the 45 auto and flashlight and slid down over the embankment. He scampered back about three minutes later in a big hurry. No shots fired, his eyes big, and his face white. He said that he should get out of here because that thing he saw could be dangerous. He said it was big and covered with hair. It looked like it was trying to hide under some branches. He said he saw a face glance at him as it was walking away, and he said that he thought it was a hunter wearing a brown fur coat and was on horseback because he was so much taller and he was walking, yet he saw no horse. The BFRO investigator that took this report did not leave his name with the report. And here's his follow-up investigation. I talked with the witness in person. The following details can be added to the report. Witness did not look for nor see any tracks from the siding on the ridge. The creature may have been crawling across the road because it was injured or because it was in distress by the presence of the vehicle. Or it could have been trying not to be seen, as it was a dark object against the white snow on the ground. This is Kelly Shaw giving the sighting report for you guys and showing you the beautiful area. When we come into this particular part of Idaho investigating Bigfoot sightings, we always seem to find ourselves on the edge of the River of No Return wilderness. I'm talking from Deadwood all the way up to South Fork Salmon, on up into the Montana Bitterroot Forest. There's a lot of Bigfoot sightings around here. The closest Bigfoot sighting that we have been to from this one is a bear hunter's Bigfoot sighting near the edge of the River of No Return Wilderness and the Chalice area of Idaho. And his Bigfoot sighting was pretty compelling. There's a such thing as mistaken identity. People may be seeing something that maybe something else who knows but because of the dozens and dozens of bigfoot sighting reports near this area near the wilderness of no return area i just don't think all of them are mistaken identity and more than likely a lot of them are genuine bigfoot sightings i hope you enjoyed this bigfoot sighting report keep on watching we're going to keep on squatching.